The comeback, when all seemed lost. Victory snatched out of the jaws of defeat and that ugly beast defeated. In stick and ball sports, it's points, opportunity, time remaining all squeezed together, creating the moment of the comeback. This is for sole possession of the lead. Maybe. Yes, sir! In motorsports such as oval racing and road racing, it may be overcoming a wreck, penalty, or mechanical issue. Bill Elliott comes down and will win the Winston 500, but they are still door-to-door -door for second spot. Cale Yarborough and Kyle Petty, the two Ford Thunderbirds, ride door-to-door -door as they come to the line. Who is it going to be? It will be Kyle Petty by what? Six inches, no more than that, finishing second as they sweep back into turn one as Bill Elliott wins here at Talladega. And we'll be going to Victory Lane to chat with him and what a payday he will have picking up the race here this afternoon, coming overcoming almost two laps down early this afternoon and coming back to win. And there he is to take the first win of his comeback. And that means to say that uh, provided Keki Rosberg, who is some 20 seconds behind Nicky Lauda, who has won the U.S. Grand Prix West of 1982 at uh, Long Beach. In drag racing, though, a comeback spans usually over days, events, and even seasons. A pedal fest isn't a comeback, it's a round win. In a year that is remembered for iconic imagery such as Don Garlett's moonshot in Englishtown, Kenny Bernstein's continual domination in the funny car ranks, it is in Pro Stock that we find a great drag racing comeback. I think the greatest comeback in NHRA Pro Stock, and it is connected with arguably its greatest driver, Bob Glidden. When Bob Glidden hung up the racing helmet, to his credit, 85 NHRA national event wins. 10 NHRA championships, and in 1986, he rolled into the season with the number one on the side of his pro stalker from winning the 85 season championship. 86 began slowly though, early round losses in the Winter Nationals and Gator Nationals attempting to figure out a brand new car to make the championship run in NHRA Pro Stock competition, saw him coming into the third race of the season at a young NHRA national event that he had not yet won rolling in. Atlanta Dragway, where we have got round two of pro stock competition coming up. I'm Steve Evans along with... In 1986, the Southern Nationals, Atlanta Dragway, Commerce, Georgia, was the third event on the NHRA national event campaign, and it seemed after a round two win that Bob Glidden was coming into that championship form. Here's the man that kind of spoiled that for him in the far lane. The current world champion, the winningest drag racer ever, regardless of category, Bob Glidden from Whiteland, Indiana. The beautiful three-tone Ford Thunderbird. In the near line, it is Joe Lapone Jr. from New Jersey. And this smiling gentleman is Bob Glidden, enjoying his sixth Pro Stock World Championship season. And of course, an integral part of this operation, his wife, Etta, nervously pacing behind the automobile. She'll be watching those rear tires, Brock, to see if the car comes loose at all and try to relate some of that information back to Bob after the run. Glidden in the far lane, the Chevrolet Camaro of Joe Lapone is in the near lane, staged and ready, and they're off the mark. Glidden with a fantastic start. One of his best reaction times in recent memory. It is no contest here. Bob Glidden, 7.59 seconds. Etta with a big smile, 180 miles an hour. Just a Bob Glidden set poised to advance to his first final round of 1986. All he had to do was get past Butch Leal. 
a tough pro stock competitor, known as a lever in the industry, a early season hard charger who also happened to be the defending Southern Nationals champion. Get past him, win the final, the race itself, and it sets up clearly a path to the championship and on to the Cajun Nationals. As we see, and we'll let Steve Evans and Brock Yates call, it was to be a different outcome entirely. Leo, last to stage, taking his time, put a little pressure on Glidden. Leo is finally into the beams. They leave right together. Identical reaction times. This is going to be a classic. Ford versus General Motors drag race. It is. It appears. Oh, Glidden is upside down. Glidden in big trouble. Oh, this is a bad, bad one, Brock. It is indeed. Got into that fence. The car continues to flop and roll. It looks as if the roll cage stayed together. There's sheet metal and fiberglass all over the racetrack. The NHRA safety crews instantaneously on the scene. So far, no movement from Bob Glidden, though. Everybody in this place. Atta Glidden being consoled by uh, Warren Johnson's wife, Arlene. Obviously very concerned about her husband. Who's, there he comes. Bob Glidden is out of the car. Bob Glidden appears to be as okay as you could possibly be after a horrendous crash. Let's take a look at it again. The parachute is the culprit. The parachute did not come out properly. Yanked the car to one side. Thank the Lord. Butch Leal was clear of it, or it could have been even worse. Into the rail, upside down, nose first. And now the worst thing that can happen, flipping on top of the guardrail like that. Now this car is the first one that Glenn has ever owned that had a funny car style roll cage. And I got to think that probably saved his life. You're absolutely right. The car into that fence at around 185 miles an hour still rolling six and a half full rolls you see all that body work coming loose but you don't see any of the roll cage coming apart body work you can lose roll cage absolutely critical to the survival of this world champion and it appears at this moment that he is going to be all right well there's the world champion standing tall and straight being consoled by his oldest son billy bob bob are you okay yeah i'm fine oh, boy. It's a miracle to get out of that one. I, all I can do is thank the chassis builder, uh, Jerry Haas. You know, I, I don't know what happened. I felt the back of the car come up, and it went over, and I just put my arms around my head, and I was just in there riding along. I hope Etta knows that you're okay. I'm, I, I'm sure she does by now. Uh, I'm waiting for her to, to get down here. I don't... She'll surely be here before long. Again, glad to see that you're okay. That just happened instantly. I don't know exactly what happened. Bob Glidden leaves Atlanta intact, but the car, as you could see, is in shambles. Warren Johnson leaves with the points lead, and even though Bob Glidden and team were able to be at the next NHRA national event, the Cajun Nationals, his team struggled to find that championship form for the next several events, whereas his competitors, Warren Johnson, Butch Leal, continued to stretch out the points. Billy Glidden remarked in a CompetitionPlus.com article that their race pack, a data recording device, was destroyed in the accident in Atlanta, so they were racing without any data for several events. Billy also pointed out to his father that he was short-shifting, and once these issues were resolved, the team began to find their groove once again, and that was on display at the Summer Nationals in Englishtown, New Jersey. After his crash at the Southern Nationals in Atlanta, Georgia, Bob Glidden was returning to form by Summer Nationals time. He established a new elapsed time record for Pro Stocks at 7.44 seconds in his first round victory over Don Beverly. After setting the new national elapsed time record, at the next NHRA national event, Bob Glidden was back to his winning ways. The man that crashed his car at the race earlier in the season at Atlanta, Georgia, came back with a vengeance at the Mile High Nationals as he took on Warren Johnson. It was the performance of the Thunderbird that prevailed over the Oldsmobile as Bob Glidden took his first win of the 1986 season and the 47th of his illustrious career. He ran over 174 miles an hour in the mile-high altitude of Bandemir Speedway. We feel really well uh, 
and really good about the way the cars run. Uh, I think we came to this race prepared to uh, to do what we did. And after the crash in Atlanta, you needed this. The whole team needed this to know you were still capable. Yes, we did. It's been a long, long climb for us. I'm telling you, we're, we're, I'm really happy. I can tell. Pro Stock champion, the Mile High Nationals, Thank Bob Wooden. And Bob kept winning and winning and winning, even winning during this stretch, his 50th national event win. By the way, he set another national ET record, all of it culminating to a high-pressure moment for him and Warren Johnson concerning the points at Phoenix for the Fall Nationals. And notice how the Atlanta crash still dominates the narrative. Defending champion Bob Glidden was being challenged by Warren Johnson. Bob, of all of your world championships, this may go down as the toughest fought. Two races left, about a two-round lead over Warren Johnson. Well, uh, we've been fortunate enough, Steve, to have uh, six world championships. This one is far from over. Uh, Warren has really been in the lead most of the year. I'm sure he's been working hard. Uh, to prepare for the last two races, and he'll be ready come race day. Any strategy at all involved here? Maybe try to qualify on the same side of the ladder as him, maybe try to draw him first round and get rid of him. What, anything at all there that you used to do, those sort of things? No, uh, our philosophy after the Atlanta incident has been to come to each race and try to win a race. Well, we've been fortunate enough to win four, I think, of the last five. So we came to this race just to run this race and uh, hope that we come out of it with, with the, the Winston points lead. At what point do you really start to get worried about no chance for that world title? Uh, after the final round of the last race, I think that would be about <laughs> where to worry about it. But uh, two races left, there's really about a 500-point deficit at this point in uh, time now, 200 points per round. It's really of no concern at this point in time other than the fact you'd like to be ahead. But... Uh, our Rosenbill is running well enough at this point in time that, uh, yeah, I believe we can overhaul them. You know, as you know, I mean, there's so many things that can happen in this uh, this type of racing. Uh, as a witness early in the year, you know, with Bob's crash and so forth, uh, we certainly don't want anything like that to happen. But uh, with the hole shots involved and as close as the cars are running and so forth, uh, anything can really happen. Anything certainly can happen, and it did to Warren Johnson as he went out early in eliminations at the Fall Nationals there in Phoenix. Bob Glidden was able to capitalize, winning the event, extending the points lead, setting it up that in the World Finals at Pomona, he was able to, early in eliminations, seal the deal for the NHRA Pro Stock World Championship. The World Championship points chase and Pro Stock Eliminator was decided in the first round when Bob Glidden won this race against Lee Dean. In fact, it was decided by a red light start as Lee Dean left the starting line way too early. And that gave Bob Glidden an unprecedented string of victories in the Winston World Championship race. Seven titles to Glidden's credit. Well, Bob, you've won a lot of world titles, but this one has to be especially sweet because it took such hard work on the part of an entire family. Nothing was ever easy for you this year. No, Steve, nothing has been easy. Uh, but I tell you, since the, the thing in Atlanta, it took us three or four races to, to get back running like we thought we should be. And uh, since then, we've been on a, just a roll, a hot streak. And it's been incredible. After Atlanta and your wildest dreams, would you have believed we would be having this conversation right now? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I think I made a statement to you at, a, at an earlier race. There was not a possibility of us winning the Winston World Championship, uh, but it, it happened. Bob Glidden goes on to win the World Finals in Pomona, putting the proverbial cherry on top of this comeback in 1986 from the crash in Atlanta. Elapsed time records, records in wins, records in championships. He, the 1986 NHRA Pro Stock World Champion. But this comeback story is not done. It goes on into 1987 and concludes at the third event on the season, again, the NHRA Southern Nationals. Bob goes into the event and qualifies number one. He beats Warren Johnson in round two. He beats Bruce Allen in the semifinals. And in the final round, he faces Butch Leal in the near lane, Bob in the far lane, a mirror image of what was seen in 1986 in the semifinals, and Bob Glidden 
has a chance to make his comeback complete. Coming into the finals, despite 52 national event victories, Glidden had not won at this Atlanta track. But there is always a first, and for Bob Glidden, 1987 saw him the victor at the Southern Nationals. Well, I am standing next to one proud bird and one uh, very proud Hoosier. You finally conquered Atlanta, Bob Glidden. I'll tell you what, I not only conquered Atlanta after the episode that went on here last year, but I finally beat Leal in a final. This is the first race we've won all, won all year. Uh, you know, I know the people at Ford and people at Motorcraft are going to be glad to see the Thunderbird come through finally. Hey, guys. Monday Morning Racer here. Thanks for watching this feature presentation concerning Bob Glidden. I was a Bob Glidden fan. Didn't get to really see him in his heyday, but I watched 1986 NHRA over and over and over as a kid. And when I think of drag racing wreck, I think of, well, Bob's first and foremost there at Atlanta. With it being the last year at Atlanta, I wanted to do something to remember a little bit of history at Atlanta and also just put the dots together on what I think really is the greatest pro stock comeback of all time. It's amazing what Bob did after that wreck to go on and win the championship, but not only just win the championship, but to go and win the race in the fashion that he did, qualifying number one and beating all those great names such as Warren Johnson, Bruce Allen, and Butch Leal to get his first Southern Nationals title. I think it's the greatest pro stock comeback of all time. Thank you for watching. I'm the Monday Morning Racer. Be sure to follow on Twitter, Instagram, like on Facebook, subscribe right here on YouTube for live racing and the tales of racing just as you saw with the greatest pro stock comeback. Till next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.